But suppose you're a Muslim and you've already massively exceeded the four wife limit. Suppose you already have nine or eleven wives, not to mention multiple sex slaves. You're walking down the street and you see a beautiful woman. What do you do? Fortunately for us, the Prophet of Islam has the answer. He always does, doesn't he? Sahih Muslim 3407. It was narrated from Jabir that the Messenger of Allah saw a woman. Then he came to his wife Zainab, who was tanning a leather, and fulfilled his desire. Then he went out to his companions and said, A woman comes in the form of a devil and goes in the form of a devil. If one of you sees a woman, let him go to his wife, for that will repel what he feels in his heart. Now, what does Muhammad mean when he says that having sex with his wife will repel what he feels in his heart? I think it's obvious, but he elaborates in Sahih Muslim 3409. Jabir said, I heard the Prophet say, If one of you likes a woman and feels attracted to her, let him go to his wife and have intercourse with her, for that will repel what is in his heart. So Muhammad saw a woman and he was attracted to her sexually. So he went to Zainab's house. She was busy working, but Muhammad made her stop what she was doing so that he could have sex with her. Then he went and told his followers that a woman comes in the form of a devil and goes in the form of a devil, and that if a man sees a woman and is attracted to her, he should run home and have sex with his wife because that will help alleviate his sexual desire. All right, there's a lot to think about here. Let me share my thoughts. First, take a look at the chapter heading for these hadiths. Recommendation to the one who sees a woman and is attracted to her to go to his wife or slave woman and have intercourse with her. Again, this is about Muhammad, history's greatest moral example, being sexually aroused by a woman and then running to Zainab to, quote, fulfill his desire. Notice that a man can run home either to his wife or to his slave girl. Yes, Islam allows men to have sex slaves. But David, I thought that Islam abolished slavery. Well, Islam did abolish slavery in one particular area, fantasy land. Here on Planet Reality, Muhammad and his followers bought, owned, sold, and traded slaves, and they had sex with them. Second, how much self-control and willpower did the Prophet of Islam have if he couldn't see a woman walking down the street without running back to Zainab's house and saying, Stop what you're doing! There's an emergency in my thawb! I need you to get into the bedroom because I can't stop thinking about this sexy woman I just saw. To be fair, I think that if you don't have much self-control or willpower and you become sexually aroused while running some errands, you should go to your wife instead of sitting around obsessing over the woman you saw. But think about this. How many women do you walk by every day? Probably a lot. Do you have to run home every time you see a woman? And keep in mind, Muhammad saw a woman in 7th century Medina. She would have been dressed pretty conservatively, but Muhammad still couldn't control himself. This means, of course, that you and I and pretty much everyone we know have far, far more self-control, sexual self-control, than the greatest man who ever lived. Well, Muhammad, he claimed that women are half a brain, but as you see, the half a brain is the one who made such a statement. Half a brain is Muhammad, who he said women, they will go to hell because of menstruation, who speak always against women, but yet he promised Muslims that we will have a lot of women. Even Muhammad, he claimed that women, they approach in the image of the devil and they live in the image of the devil. So how they are in the image of the devil, but you promise us devil in heaven, which means women, a lot of them. How they are evil, how they are shaitan, how they are the source of evil. And then you promise us that our reward 
will be a lot of them. How they can be the source of going to hell and yet they are the reward. Muhammad obviously is the devil. The one who say a woman she come in the image of a devil, he is insulting his mother. Which one of you he dare Muslims? To put a sign in the top of your mother grave or your mother bed, say the statement Muhammad said, women approach in the image of the devil and retires in the image of the devil. Who of you dare to make a sign in the living room so your mother she can see it every day? Who of you dare? Shame on you. That is the image Muhammad trying to make the women look like. Yet he have tons of them in his house. He want to sleep with all of them. But yet they are the devil. The fact is, he is the most devilish, satanic person ever you can imagine. This is why the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And if you want to know who is Jesus, go check his fruits. If you want to know who is Muhammad, go check his fruits. And you'll be the judge. Just be honest. Thank you. May the Lord bless you all. Daniel, if a husband forces sex upon his wife against her will, is that wrong under Sharia? Uh, so Islam comes with certain marital rights. Husbands have certain rights and duties. For example, the husband has to provide shelter. He has to provide clothing. He has to provide food. And the state, the, the Qadi, basically the Islamic state, can force the husband to provide for his wife and for his his children and his family. This is something that's good. This is an important policy that reduces the man's individual liberty. And similarly, the woman's individual liberty is also restricted that if the husband has a reasonable request for sexual relations, reasonable, then she is obligated to uh, comply with that. If she decides not to, he can't start beating her and he can't start abusing her in a violent way but she, uh, the Qadi can say that, look, you're not meeting your spousal duties and therefore you will um, forfeit your mahar, for example, your the bride dowry, you will forfeit your other um, privileges as a wife. So there's give and take in marriage. That's why Islam is beautiful because it creates this dependency between husband and wife. It's not like modern sexless marriages in the West where women say, oh, I don't, I can leave my husband to have uh, no sex for months because I don't feel like it. I'm a, I'm a strong, independent woman. And meanwhile, the husband is working his tail off trying to provide for his family. But there's no obligation on his wife to reciprocate in any kind because she's a strong, independent feminist. And she has to have maximum choice and opportunity. Must. But the poor devil, he has to work and provide for all of that with no compensation or anything. In husband gives shelter, shelter, so he has a right to be around. I hate to do this. Thank mm -hmm. you.